I'm not going to be reviewing the My Little Pony movie, so please do not ask. Why? Well, I've said all that I had to say about the movie on Stardust, Twitter, and DeviantArt. I thought it was a pretty good movie, and I wish Season 5 would have went that direction. But that sentence is it. That is literally everything I have to say about the movie, and I've seen it twice to confirm this. Whenever I decide to review something, it comes down to, how does this make me feel? I know that may sound very cheesy, but it's the truth. I have to feel something in order to be able to review it. Want examples? I felt as though Onion's anxiety was relatable, and I felt as our cartoon president was a bad parody. See, it doesn't have to be anything major, it just has to be something. And saying I like something isn't enough material for me to make a review out of it. Want to know what I would do if I found an episode like that? I would review it on my DeviantArt, which I recommend you checking it out. In November, I reviewed Hard to Say Anything as an attempt to give this channel a reboot, which I'll admit seemed very random, and to tell you the truth, it was. I wanted a show that I knew very well, so I just picked the last episode that I watched at the time. This episode, Griffin the Brush Off, is the one I should have went with because it holds a lot of value to me. Not because of the quality of the actual episode, but because it is the first episode to make me feel. This is the episode that got me back into animation as a whole. At the time, whenever I started watching MLP, I couldn't really enjoy anything. My days were basically I'd go to school, and which I was failing, and I'd come home and, other than that, possibly play a video game or watch TV, or I'd just come home and go to sleep. I had no care, I didn't get to the point of being suicidal, but I didn't care if I lived or died. I had nothing to make me happy, I didn't really have any friends or interest. I was like an emotionless soul that was basically on autopilot. Where did this all start? In middle school. I had to deal with a lot at the time. Like I said, most of my classes I had F's in. Even though I made them up to low D's by the end of the year. It mostly had to do with my bullying. I had been bullied before this, sure, but even though that was hurtful, what happened here was mer very much more. I'm not going to mention names in this, so I'll just use letters instead. In 7th grade, I moved to a new school, which was, admittedly, a nice fresh start. It took a while to actually become accepted. I went through multiple people who were friends on basically a trial period until I met A, who later that year became my best friend. All seemed good until next year, or 8th grade, when things turned sour. You see, the way my middle school was is that you would stay with the same classmates, but the teachers would change. But this year, B would move into our class. B ended up having a lot more in common with A, so I ended up getting pushed away or becoming the third will. I never liked B, and he never liked me. There was nothing there to like. He made his motives clear. He wanted to steal my best friend, A, and turn him into a bully. I guess who they decided to bully. Yes, that's right, it was me. And instead of finding new friends, I let it happen to me. Like I said, A was my best friend, and I didn't understand why this happened or if this were normal. And I always fell right into their traps to the point where they could make fun of me easily. It hurt because A was the first person to accept me for who I was the year prior, but I apparently didn't reach up to his quote-unquote standards. The reason why I dealt with this so horribly is because I never actually dealt with a loss. No one that I was close to passed away, or even a pet. It's happened now, sure, but it wasn't an acquirement that I had at the time. This may sound bad, but it is best to teach your kids the feeling of a loss at a younger age. It doesn't have to be, you know, someone dying, but there are very many kinds of loss. As well, I learned the hard way. My depression had gotten to the point where I had 
all of my hair chopped off to near bald because I didn't want people to look at me. This didn't help, but it did help me from pulling out my hair by the roots, which I may or may not have done. In high school, however, is when I was diagnosed with epilepsy, which changed a lot because I had to actually change to homebound schooling. A little after this, though, my dad received a message on PlayStation Network that basically told him to watch MLP. We both gave Friendship is Magic Part 1 a chance, and to be honest, neither one of us liked it. Sometime later, I would watch Part 2, where I didn't like it that much either. I then watched Ticketmaster and Apple Buck Season, and even though those episodes weren't the best, and I didn't really like them. Something about them, or these four episodes, kept bringing me back to the show. I think it had to do with the fact that I had nothing, so maybe if I kept giving this show chances, something would maybe spark. I then watched Griffin the Brush Off at the best place possible in my life. It was the episode that really started an ascent out of my slump. Is it the best episode of the show? No, it's not even my favorite of season one, but sometimes relatability can be over quality. After this, I became obsessed with MLP. I bought a lot of merchandise, and I even grew my hair long to go the complete opposite of what I was before. This was the only thing that I had to make me happy. Before this, I always felt as though animation was something that you just grew out of, except things like Family Guy, I guess. This was because I was always around family members who bragged about not watching cartoons anymore. Another big reason into this is because most of the shows I liked whenever I was younger had either been cancelled or reached seasonal rot. Seasonal rot was something I really didn't understand at the time. I just felt as though I grew out of shows like Spongebob. I never thought that maybe it wasn't me. At the time, I thought there was something wrong with me for not really liking newer episodes of Family Guy. I never actually realized that you could stop liking something because of the product had changed. And this went with video games and, well, everything. And how could I have had? I just always had the misconception that your interests were like your taste buds and changed or it was because of my depression was why I was losing interest. It sounds ridiculous, but sometimes I'm not exactly the fastest person in the room. Now, I've tried making this type of video a lot before, but it always felt empty, like I was missing something. I feel as though I nailed it pretty well this time. At some point I will talk about my current opinions on the show, but for now I think I'll start talking about the this episode itself. In the beginning of the episode, Rainbow Dash keeps flying away from Pinkie Pie because she finds her annoying. Remember, this is only the fifth episode of the show, and the main six's friendship wasn't exactly blossomed this early in the show. Anyway, Pinkie Pie finally convinces Rainbow Dash to help her, and as it turns out, she needed help with a prank on Spike. This turns Rainbow into liking her to the point they become best friends because Rainbow realizes she has something in common with Pinkie Pie. They start pranking all of their other friends except Fluttershy because of her sensitivity. These pranks are all in good fun, nothing that will last more than a few minutes. All is good until Gilda, Rainbow Dash's old best friend, comes into the picture. Gilda is basically the bee kid I mentioned earlier. She even has the exact same motives, which are made very clear. Pinky goes to Twilight for help, who blames her. Twilight tells Pinky that it is her fault that she is just jealous, which is something that would be awful at this point in the show, but as I mentioned before, the relationship hasn't exactly blossomed yet. This leaves Pinky into believing that she is the one in the wrong, which was very similar to my situation. This is what I mean, all of the beats are there. My situation and Pinky's are near identical. Now in the rest of the episode is more of how I should have dealt with it, but I didn't think of it at the time. However, Twilight's letter is 
what really got to me. This is one of the most simplest, but at the same time, hardest moral the show could have tackled, at least at this stage. I'm glad they did, though. It really helps me, and even watching it now, it still does. Other episodes of the show are relatable, too, but none as much so as Griffin the Brush-Off. 